Hey guys, Small Town Bassin here. What we're looking at right here is a near 100 year old machine specifically designed for boring cylinders, also known as a boring bar. guys so this is what a near 100 year old machine for boring cylinders looks like this machine was made by Rottler manufacturing um, this is actually one of their first uh, well, it's one of their first production machines this is a CA2 bar um, if any of you know the history of Rottler please post it in the comments or specifically the history of the CA2s um, because I can't find much online, even even talking to Rottler um, there. Um, there's only a couple of guys that are still there and living um, that have anything to do with these old, old tools. Uh, so I'm missing a lot of history on it, but what I do know is it was patented back in the 1930s. Uh, this design specifically was patented in the 1930s, so that gives you an idea how old it is. Um, you see there's no manual controls to, you know, pull the bar up like a Van Norman or, uh, or one of the other more popular production machines. Um, the only real control you have is what's intended to be the automatic control. You have your hard, well, it's really a soft stop that's spring loaded. But you have your stop bar, um, which is meant to trigger the whole assembly. But in this case, I, I don't use that. I don't trust it. Anyway, uh, I control by hand down. This is neutral. Um, that's up, retract. Um, in any case, I'm not really trying to teach you how to use the bar. I'm just going to show you how I use the bar. Um, this right here is a, a specific plate that I designed and a buddy of mine cut for me um, just for a 2.5 liter mercury. So the block actually bolts up from underneath. Imagine this is the head torque plate you know basically the same thing so you bolt the block up to this plate and then you have a true parallel surface to the deck um, to float your boring bar on which slides on a t-nut across the t-slot so it can it can really be maneuvered anywhere on the plate any angle um, to meet any hole that's inside this four inch cut now uh pros and cons so number one con when I got it, the second hole I cut, the original micarta gear, it bit the dust. Um, so what happened is mistakenly, I let the bar go just a bit too far, um, scrape the bottom of the, uh, of the cylinder, the aluminum casting, which where the rod slot is. So it just dug a little too deep. Um, which this gear is sacrificial. Every other part of this machine is made of steel. There, this is the only composite part on the whole machine. Um, and it's a silent reduction gear located inside this gearbox. Um, so whenever I bottomed it out, um, I obviously ate that gear. Um, the funny part is, Rottler has no intention of providing me with one because it's a hundred year old design. Um, they are not interested in retooling their production line in order to make me an obsolete gear that they custom designed for their machines. So, make master cars out of the question. But what they did do, share with me the original drawings here. Thank you, Rottler. Um, so what I did with these drawings is I reached out. I reached out all over the dark web looking for someone who could cut me a gear and the quotes I got were ridiculous they were more than the machine itself um, for the home shop nope can't happen um, so after beating my head against the wall and talking to a hundred thousand people looking for ideas uh, a machinist fabricator that does work for the company I work for said hey man you own a 3d printer don't you I said yeah he said 3d print one he said, think about it. Back then, when they designed a micarta gear to go in this machine, they didn't have all the materials available you have today at their fingertips. You do in a 3D printer. I said, man, that's probably the best thing I've heard. You're right. 
I'm going to 3D print it, and I'm going to 3D print it here in any material I can find, all materials I can find, every material I own at least. So I did so, and I printed the first gear. Oh man, it's weak. It's super weak. Um, none of these are as weak as the gear that's in the machine at this moment. None of them are as weak. Um, it, is it was just a trial. I printed it out of uh, PETG. I wasn't going to use PLA as a first run. I thought, eh, no, I better go with PETG. It's more oil resistant, I think. Um, so I went with PETG because that is an oil filled gearbox. Um, and I have bored two, three. I've bored three blocks with it on that one trial run Pet G gear. Um, and it's worked flawlessly until the other day I bombed it out again. Um, and yeah, it ate the gear. So what we're going to do is we're going to tear it down on camera. Uh, we're going to pull it out, check the condition of it. I've been dying to see the condition of it. And we're going to bypass Pet G again, PLA. We're not even going there. PLA. Uh, what we have here is composites. We've got uh, carbon fiber nylon. So it's got chopped carbon fiber. Um, this was the original gear I designed, which isn't solid. I mean, what you see, that outer ring, focus. The outer ring is the only solid part. The inside is mostly infill. Um, if you can see the pattern of that keyway in there, that's how thick the wall is. I mean, it's thick. So is the uh, the outer ring. It's I mean, it's thick, but uh, the whole gear isn't solid, uh, just so you know. Um, but that's uh, nylon carbon fiber. This is the other gear I designed just to use less material and give it some more rigidity. Adding, uh, adding more circles um, really does make it stronger, um, honestly. And you get that extra thick wall in every one of them. So we have that. And then we have nylon glass. So this is nylon fiberglass. And this has super long fiberglass strands in it. These fibers are, I mean, it's basically dust. I don't know how they call it carbon fiber. It's more like carbon dust. This actually has fibers and they are long. Some of them were up to like half an inch long. It was nuts. I'm surprised I was able to even print the stuff. Uh, but this one, I, I marked on it what the parameters were. So it's 2.4 millimeter thick walls. 30% infill. That one is 1.4, no, that's 2.4 millimeter walls, 50% infill. This is also 2.4, no, it's not. Uh, this one's 100%, so really the walls don't matter as much. But I think it's also 2.4, printed at 0.14 millimeter layer height at 260 Celsius. This is a solid one. I'm skipping all of these. I'm not going to do any more testing. We got six holes cut. A trial, pet G, weakest of them all. I mean, the, the parameters just, it was a trial just to test the shape. Uh, but anyway, I reverse engineered Rottler's drawing and uh, put it in Fusion. And uh, then my printer and spit one out of my own modified design. Uh, Let's go for it. This is the best material I'm capable of printing at the highest parameter settings, which is 100%. I mean, you just can't do more than that. Uh, the teeth on the gear are only going to be as strong as they are. I mean, it, it is what it is. So you can't, I don't think you, with this material, you can do any better. It's not going to fail because of my parameters. It's going to fail because of the material. That's just plain. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put this guy in. Red meow. Tappy tap tap.
gear is fine. Oh no, I bet it sheared the keyway. Look at that Pet G gear doing its thing. Beautiful. Wow. It did not shear the keyway. So this section of the drive is fine. Wow, okay, so I have other issues. I was wrong, check it out. Uh, put a small screwdriver through the roll pin hole that connected to the vertical shaft. Um, now when I do this, if I hold that pin, I can still rotate my plastic gear around its own keyway. So if I pull that guy out, ah, uh, yep. <clears throat> you see the metal key in the shaft? That was the failure point of the Pet G gear was the keyway. Um, the wall thickness on this is more like 1.2 millimeters compared to the 2.4s, uh, twice the thickness of the rest of those gears, with the exception of the 100%. That's the one we're going to replace it with. The nylon glass fiber should hold up even better than the originally designed micarta. Um, I would probably compare the nylon fiber gear to uh, more like aluminum, but better because it will rebound to its original shape uh after certain points of elongation so it it'll give when it needs to give specifically for interrupted cuts on two stroke cylinders that's very important so it'll give when it needs to give um, but also retain just enough rigidity and rebound back to its original shape that it's, it's durable that's what you call tough um, when you're talking about materials a very tough material um, so we'll see how it holds up, but hey, good to know. Um, the teeth, I was real worried about the, the teeth and uh, the 3D printed translation of Rottler's original design is beautiful. I mean, there is no, no evidence of wear at all on the teeth. Surprising. Wow. Anyway, uh, let's get this cleaned up and uh, put this gear on, put it back together. And then we'll bore a hole. How about that? We're going from the weakest gear that actually, I'm very surprised. The teeth, I mean, we're fine. Um, to the strongest. Now, it's going to be hard for this thing to move this material out of the way to strip that keyway. This was easy. Uh, the inner wall, the parameters here, it's not thick at all. So it could really just deform the plastic into more of an oval shape. It looks like that's what it did. Um, and then just deform the plastic. Um, anyway, it's not going to do that with this one. So we'll see what happens. Um, maybe Pet G is the way to go. Um, I don't know. We'll find out. Um, so what I got to do is I got to drive this guy on, line the key. Line the key up first. And then take a socket. <clears throat> and drive it on there. Like so. Get back here and get a more solid solid footing on it anyway make sure that keys lined up come on now it's hard to hold oh yeah she going on there now
almost. Oh yeah, that's the ticket right there. She's fully seated on the key. See if you can find there's a little piece of material in the way. Um, it kind of cut in as it went. Um, beautiful. You know, for those of you that have a press or something easier, I get it. But uh, we got her done. And then you just mate that guy in there and there. And just give her a tap, tap, tap. And then give her a spin. Ooh, about pinched me. That about got me. I got to be more careful. That's the deal. Needs to wear in a little bit. But that mesh is beautiful. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen it up and we're going to center it with the built-in mechanism. Now I will use the accompanying tool to lock my cutter in place. small hole into a larger hole. 